So have you ever had those really annoying little translucent or grayish black or even dark black floating things all over your vision? Well, if you're trying to figure out if those are dangerous or what you can do about them, keep watching. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Rupa Wong, board certified ophthalmologist, and on this channel we talk about eye surgery, eye health, and all the things that you can do to keep your vision as healthy as possible. So today we're talking about floaters. You know them, those really pesky, translucent, gray, black, whatever color they are, they are annoying and they disrupt your normal vision and can be very debilitating. So all a floater is, is the vitreous gel in your eye starting to liquefy and even degenerate, if you will. The vitreous is 98% water. The other 2% is macromolecules. It's collagen and hyaluron. So when you are born, your vitreous gel is clear, of course. But as we age, there are structural changes that occur in the vitreous gel. This causes the gel to liquefy from dissociation of the collagen from the hyaluronon. And then what happens is that the collagen fibers begin to aggregate. And then when they're floating inside the vitreous jelly, they start to cast shadows on your retina. And that is what you see. Now, most people are most symptomatic when they are looking at a really light colored background, either a white wall or looking up at the sky. And that's when you really find those floaters the most annoying. They might resemble tiny multiple spots or even spider web like collections. Sometimes you can even see a large black floater, which might actually mean something a little bit different. So there are primary floaters and secondary floaters. Primary floaters are the floaters that occur just as a consequence of aging or of even being nearsighted. So if you are younger, you might notice floaters because you are nearsighted. Secondary floaters are the kind that are consequence from inflammation inside the eye. I treat a lot of of kids and adults with uveitis, which is inflammation in the eye. And one of the first things that the adults will notice is floaters, but that's a really different kind of floater. It's a sudden onset. It's not something that they've had for a substantial period of time. And those floaters might be uh, related to rheumatologic diseases or collagen vascular disorders or different types of diseases. Again, that's more related because of the inflammation. It could be from infection, but those are secondary floaters. Now, another type of floater is called a posterior vitreous detachment. And what happens is as you age, the vitreous starts to separate from the inner lining of the retina. That process takes about four to six weeks and that can cause a floater that's a little bit different in nature. It can cause a big black floater, almost like a cockroach or a fly that's uh, buzzing across your field of vision. People are always trying to swat them away, but there's nothing to swat away. And that's a little different than the translucent, clear or gray type floaters that represent the collagen fibers. So what are the causes of floaters? As I mentioned before, sometimes it's just aging. 70% of adults over the age of 70 have a posterior vitreous detachment, but it may also be a consequence of nearsightedness. Now, why does nearsightedness or myopia cause floaters? Well, most people that are myopic have a longer than normal eye. That's called your axial length. I talk a lot about axial length progression when we're trying to prevent nearsightedness from worsening in kids. So we actually have ways to treat that now. But for adults, sorry, there's no way to treat it. And your eyeball is just a little bit longer than everyone else's. And so the gel of your eye, everything is just stretched a little bit more than in an eye which is not nearsighted. And so that's why nearsighted individuals are a little bit more at risk for floaters and have them at a younger age than people that are either farsighted, hyperopic, or emetropic, don't need glasses at all. Other reasons for floaters are if you've had cataract surgery or sometimes even trauma to the eye can cause floaters. And then there's a whole bunch of different reasons that can cause 
a different kind of a floater, like hemorrhage or bleeding in the eye, which might be visualized as a floater. People that have diabetes that is not really well controlled, that can actually cause bleeding inside your eye, and you might notice that as a floater. If you're hit in the eye, you might have a hemorrhage as well. There's a lot of different reasons to have a vitreous hemorrhage, which can also present as a floater. Now, if you're having the following symptoms, then this might be a sign that your floater is not just a regular floater, but might be associated with a retinal tear or a detachment. So if you have a sudden onset of the black floater accompanied with flashing lights, a change in your vision, a shadowing in the periphery, or like a curtain falling down over your vision, then you really need to see your ophthalmologist right away because those are signs and symptoms of a retinal detachment or a retinal tear. And the reason this happens is because as that vitreous separates from the inner lining of the retina, it's very easy for it to tug and pull a piece of the retina. It's typically attached in three different points and it can pull a little piece of the retina causing a retinal tear. If fluid gets underneath inside that tear, then a detachment can occur. And so time is really of the essence. I'm not a retina specialist, but I send it to my colleagues who are, and it's really important to attach that retina as quickly as possible to preserve the integrity of the retinal cells and just preserve your vision. So if you're having any of those signs and symptoms, stop watching this video right now and please call your ophthalmologist. Now, one popular misconception is that stress causes floaters. It does not cause floaters. Stress might make you more aware of floaters, but it certainly is not the cause for them. So if you're reading any of those natural treatments for floaters and they tell you to meditate and de-stress, those are all great things to do, but it's not going to really have anything to do with the formation of the floater itself. So what are the treatments for floaters? Unfortunately, there are no home remedies or natural treatments for floaters. A lot of the eye exercises that I've read online are really about just getting your brain to adapt to the floater, which is great if it works for you. And that's usually what happens is that your brain eventually starts to ignore the floater and stops paying attention to it. For most people, the floaters stop being problematic, but it can take more than a few weeks. It can take months or even years for a lot of individuals to start to ignore those floaters. Now, other treatment options include a YAG vitreolysis, which is a laser type surgery, which is used to uh, pulse bursts of energy and vaporize the floaters. And a third treatment option is actually surgery or a pars plane of vitrectomy done by your retina surgeon. And what they do is remove the entire liquid vitreous, the gel, from the inside of the eye. And I'm going to talk more in depth about both of those treatments in a separate video because there's a lot to unpack right there. But those are treatment options, though we don't tend to recommend the YAG vitreolysis or the pars plane of vitrectomy unless someone is really, really miserable. And that's because those surgeries are not without risks. It's not something that just melts away the floater without any cause for concern. I mean, there's always the potential for blindness whenever you do any kind of surgery, laser or or otherwise. But you guys should know that it is a treatment option and we'll talk more about it in that other video. So there you go, that's what a floater is. In general, they are not dangerous, but if you are having the accompanying signs and symptoms of flashes, loss of vision, a curtain falling down over your vision, or any kind of shadowing, it certainly can be vision threatening and you do wanna see your ophthalmologist right away. And please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel, like and comment on this video so that I know what type of content to produce for you. And once you subscribe, then you know you're getting all the best eye health information right away. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. And until next time, it was good to see you. I'm Dr. Rupa. Bye-bye.